Hi everyone. We are ready to add paint to our drawing, which has been transferred to my canvas panel. In this case, I'm using a masonite panel that I prepared with an oil primer. And I've done a charcoal drawing that I went over with India ink, an India ink pen, so that I could still see the drawing underneath the next layer, which is a simple raw under raw umber underpainting, which will ultimately be our grisaille. And um, so our objective is very simple today, and our tools and materials are very simple as well. I'm using just raw umber. Could not be simpler. No other paints, no white, no prismatic palette, just simply raw umber. A small bit, a very small bit, of refined linseed oil. Refined linseed oil is the most popular linseed oil used by artists. I'll also be using um, those Blue Shop paper towels. I use the ones by Scott. You get them at the hardware store. I get them at Lowe's in the painter's aisle. Um, I also have my photo reference. In this case, it's a color photo. I also have a black and white photo. But if you don't have a black and white photo, I recommend one of these. This, this will change your life and uh, change the way you see. This is a ruby beholder, and it's really just a small clear, transparent, uh, rose-colored piece of plastic, which enables you to see nature without color, really just in values. Um, as you can see here, where you can see your dark light and your midtones, whether you're looking at your photo reference or looking at nature, this ruby beholder comes in handy at enabling you to see just in terms of values. I also have my value scale with me at all times. I will use a value scale and a ruby beholder throughout the entire painting process to check values constantly. So that is always right next to me. I also have a chip brush. It's the only brush I'll be using today. And, um, well, let's get crack a in This could not be easier. So, the um, first thing I do is... I put a little refined linseed oil on a rag. A little paper towel. Mm, maybe a little more. We'll put on a wee bit more. So our objective now is just to simply cover the surface of the canvas. Now this ink is probably dried. <clears throat> Sometimes I get to a little I get to it a little early. And I've actually wiped away the ink. <laughs> so you want to let that ink dry for about 10 minutes. That looks good. I don't really see much ink coming up at all. So I'm covering the surface with a whisper-thin cover of refined linseed oil. I think you can see the sheen in the camera there. But when I say whisper-thin... If I run my fingers across the surface of this, there's like a little bit of residue. You can see that on the, on the tips of my fingers. And sometimes you can, if you hold it on its side, you can see, you can sort of see, yeah, there you go. There's like a little oily sheen. And you can see if maybe you missed a spot. But that looks like pretty decent coverage or not. Maybe I missed a spot right there. You see that? There's like a little holiday there. Okay, so the idea is just to cover the whole surface. What this does, it seals the drawing underneath the oil. Refined linseed oil will slow the drying time of paint. So this will give me maybe, oh, if I'm guessing, maybe like six hours of painting time before, before the uh, paint actually sets and dries. Um, but okay, so here we go. The next thing I'll do is squeeze out a little raw umber and just using a chip brush I load my chip brush with raw umber paint that's it no other paint and I'm ready to go and this is my favorite part because it's really hard to screw it up I'm just going to cover the entire painting I've got a little six by eight panel this is pretty pretty common for um, my oil studies I typically will do a small oil study before I do a larger painting, mostly to check composition, drawing, value, color. Will the whole thing work, you know? And truth be told, I don't have to even complete the entire study before I know whether or not it's going to make a good painting. 
or it's a guess really. I'm just taking my best guess, but if I get about 80% through, I can tell more or less if it's worth making into a larger painting. I'm not always right, but it's sort of like a safety net, I guess. It's very time consuming to do larger paintings and then only to come to the end of the painting to realize it kind of stinks. <laughs> so this is sort of like a little test run. All right. Nothing special about the way I was applying the paint there. Nothing special at all. I just want to cover it. Okay, that's pretty good coverage. Fairly thin. I can still see the drawing underneath. And now I'll take a um, clean shop towel and I'll sort of even that out. What I'm looking for is um, something that's the equivalent of a mid-tone. And again, I still want to be able to see my drawing underneath. looking for is approximately a value five right somewhere around here like a mid-tone so this part of the painting is very simple this is about abstract puzzle shapes you want to see large abstract puzzle shapes of light dark and mid-tone so in my reference you can see that the sky is primarily made up of the light areas I'd say two-thirds of the painting is mid-tones and then to a lesser degree the house some of the uh, trees and bushes back here and this little outbuilding or shed are my darks it's a very it's a very um, harmonized arrangement of light dark and mid-tones a harmonized arrangement of light darks and mid-tones will be a painting that is has a disproportionate amount of light, dark, and mid-tones. So this one is dominated by mid-tones to a lesser degree lights and then to an even lesser degree darks. So what I'm doing now is I'm folding the rag around my finger. I find a clean part of the rag and I'm simply wiping away the areas where there is light. And so just to be clear, as soon as I cover the entire canvas like I just did, one third of the painting is done for today, for today's goal or today's mission with the wipe away. Because my objective is, is to simply wipe away the lights and beef up the darks. So by covering it with a mid-tone, half of the, one third rather of the painting is done. The mid-tones are done. You'll see as this painting proceeds. finding another clean spot in the rag. So you can see that I wiped away the sky. And if, if this entire surface was covered and it was a value five approximately, every time I wipe away, um, it's like the equivalent of wiping away a value. So I, I've wiped away the sky. It now looks like it's approximately value six. And I take a rag and I wipe away another area and I can wipe away a seven, right? And I could find another clean part of the rag and wipe it away to an eight. And I can get that to the white of the canvas if I want. But that's, that's essentially my objective right now is to wipe away the lights. It's very satisfying. And you actually have a tremendous amount of control because it's a, it's a slow process, so it's methodical. And your objective is clear and simple. Get a rag and wipe away those lights. Easy peasy. I love the yellow glow. It's almost like a, it almost ends up looking like a sepia old fashioned photograph. My aging eyes, I can barely see the drawing. <laughs> oh man. I, I, I usually will draw a thicker line. Um, I think I was falsely confident with this one, but I think I'll be fine. 
Okay. The process goes pretty quickly too. A little trick. Since I'm working on a very small painting, some of those areas are hard to get into. Um, those little tight areas. So what I'll do is I'll make a little, like a little pointy, a pointy nub I'll call it. How about that? There's probably an official artistic term for this. <laughs> but I'm making this little um, pointy nub out of my uh, paper towel. And this will allow me to get into um, little areas of detail and wipe away small sort of small little areas where they're hard to get into. Like there's some um, architectural elements on here, like the around the door. You see, you have to kind of work at that. Okay. Another great little trick is a kneaded eraser. This is a um, rubber kneaded eraser, and you can fasten this into a little point as well. And watch this, this is really satisfying. Isn't that fun? So you can, and just like the paper towel, you find a clean part of the nub, and you wipe away the lights. Okay, so at this point, I have wiped away the lights. So theoretically, two-thirds of the painting is now done. So what you see is the halftones and the lights. Lights mainly taking up the sky, and of course, these little accents in the architecture in the house. And to a lesser degree, there are these little notes in the uh, distant plane behind this shed. You know, and it's debatable whether or not those are light mid-tones or if they're in the, actually in the lights. They're probably light mid-tones. Um, I'm not pretending to be perfect, <laughs> but I always have a well-laid plan. Um, and there's these um, marks in the foreground that could also be in the lights. And I'm just indicating those in right now. Um, I want to also point out that if you feel like you made a mistake, for example, you can take a, a, a fairly clean brush. This brush is contaminated still, but I want to wipe any chunks of paint off there. Uh, it's slightly contaminated, but I use this to soften edges. And I'm constantly thinking of edges from the beginning of the painting right through to the end. And there's a, a dictum that's worth noting here, and that is don't paint the picture, but picture the paint. I stole that from someone. I can't remember who. I think maybe Don Demers. It's a good one, whoever whoever said it. Um, and what that means is, whether you're standing before nature, looking at your motif, or if you have a photo reference that you're looking at, you should picture what that photo reference or what nature would look like as a finished painting. And the, the quicker you can do that exercise, the, the better chance you have at actually having a successful painting. So I know that I want these distant headlands to have soft edges uh, because I visualized what this painting would look like since the beginning. And so I'm constantly going to address them with the soft edge and make sure that these edges are soft. 
hard edges come easy. Um, and it's better to um, make your edges soft early on and harden them later than the opposite. Because it's harder to soften a hard edge than it is the opposite. In short, keep them soft. Okay, so just for our checklist, we've um, covered the entire canvas with a mid-tone and we've wiped away our lights. We are two thirds done. Now we're going to beef up the darks, I say. So I'm gonna load my brush up with a little more <clears throat> raw umber. And since that's the only paint we're dealing with, it could not be easier. I'm using the paint very thin. There's not a lot of paint on there. Um, and so I'm just going to paint the dark areas as I see them. You know, before I do this, let me, let me add something. Like, I, I can see that this distant headland of trees, uh, if, if I'm trying to, to determine which value that is, you know, in the wipe away area, I might be tempted to wipe that away to make it lighter. Because if you look at the distant headlands against the house, it certainly looks like those distant headlands are much lighter than the house, and they certainly are. But should I lighten them now, or should I darken the house? Watch what happens when I darken the house. It just fits into place better. I, I'm still gonna make that judgment once I darken in the house. I'll determine how much of this I'll wipe away to match the value of the distant headlands. Now, all that little intricate work I did to get these windows in place. This is a small little six by eight. I'm using the biggest brush I can for as long as I can without being incredibly sloppy. <laughs> it's not easy to do. Um, and I'm not pretending to be awesome at it, but I think the bigger brush you use, the more breadth you can have in the painting, you know, the more the, um, you don't get caught up in the details too early. Start with a broom and finish with a needle, they tell me. That's a metaphor to um, start with the big shapes, think in terms of big shapes, even use large tools in the beginning. Okay. So there it is, a fairly simple wipe away. <clears throat> wipe away the lights and beef up the darks. And I used a combination of um, my paper towel, some soft paint brushes, and um, the kneaded eraser to get whatever effects that I needed. Um, oftentimes, you, you, I don't know if you saw it in the time lapse, but I use this, um, it's like a mop brush, and it's very, very soft. It's almost the equivalent of a, uh, a makeup brush. And it's just to get super soft edges. I like to uh, maintain soft edges as long as I can throughout the painting. So I'm constantly going in and softening edges from time to time. Um, so there you have it, that's step one. Uh, the next step is we will introduce underpainting white or quick dry white with raw umber and begin to develop um, a series of mid-tones to further enhance the, uh, the value uh, families here. Right now, if you squint your eyes, your painting should be a collection of really just three major value families, mid-tones, darks, and lights, that's it. We'll expand upon those with the introduction of underpainting white or a quick dry white and um, uh, umber to make a series of grays. And we will take each one of those families the light, mid-tone, and dark families, and expand upon those, expand upon the subtleties within those. Hope you enjoyed this. These are fun and fairly easy to do. Um, 
this one is only a six by eight, so it probably took maybe an hour, hour and a half, something like that. But with a larger canvas, I like to have a full day in the studio, six hours, four to six hours to sort of chew away on a, on a wipe away. Um, they're great fun. Thank you so much.